Nice. You went to Kanye show? I did not go to Sunday service. I was in my bed in my jammies by 3.30. My show here finished at 3 o'clock. And in anticipation of what I thought would have been horrendous traffic and a nightmare, yeah. I headed on out of New Kingston. Early. Early, early mm. by 3.30 I was home. But apparently... It went, it went well. pretty well from a logistic standpoint. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what's on my mind this morning. Kanye West's epic gospel concert in Emancipation Park on Friday. His first called first so-called Sunday service <laughs> outside of the United States Sunday service on a Friday, right? Yeah. Which saw thousands of Jamaicans flocking to the historic park to watch him and his 120 member gospel choir and band perform and from all accounts, boy was it a show. Did mm. you watch the live stream? I did least? in fact. I didn't watch the whole live stream, but I tuned in to see the what I thought would have been a spectacle. So I tuned in to see <laughs> what was happening. Um, I, I liked what I saw and heard. Well, let me tell you, I'm a huge fan of Kanye West's secular Yeezy. music. Uh-huh. Yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a Yeezy fan. <laughs> From college dropout right through the life of Pablo and in between. Really? I can I can quote Kanye. Okay. Uh, so, but I wasn't particularly interested in attending this concert, though, it being tagged as a gospel concert. Because I figured he wouldn't be performing any of the songs that I know and like. The songs that I like him for. Except probably Jesus Walks. So I didn't really bother to watch the live stream either. Until I started, you know, checking Twitter. And the reviews kept rolling in on Friday night. Just everything was Kanye, 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 Sunday service. Dominating my feed with praises and awe for this magnificent production. But also how moved people seemed to be by Kanye's testimony. So I finally decided to tune in right at the very end. (laughs) I caught just the the tail end of it. Fortunately, I missed most of it and and spent a lot of the long weekend just watching every snippet that anybody would post up and every interview that the media did and fans did. And, And what I saw and heard was incredible on so many levels. By the way, Kanye reportedly spent a million U.S. dollars so I heard. on this concert. 138 million Jamaican dollars. Many uh, local entities benefiting from that spend. This wasn't a for-profit venture. And I get the principle behind those complaining about his use of official Jamaican symbols on his merchandise that was being advertised on the website for up to 200 US dollars a pop. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't use official symbols without uh, permission and paying royalties. And if Kanye is allowed to do it, then everyone will do it. But I highly doubt he made a profit off those shirts and hats. Frankly, because they were ugly. (laughs) They were clearly designed at the last minute. Not much thought went into them. If his intention was to come here to sell merchandise, he probably would have created much more attractive stuff. Because between Jamaica's universal cool factor globally and Kanye's popularity, they would have been a hot item. But those ugly things, if he made $10,000 in sales, I'd be pretty surprised. Anyway, the items have been pulled from his website, (laughs) as they should have been. You know, people who complained were right to complain. Just that I don't think he he did it. He was in it for that purpose. I did, however, see an Amazon page with some of the merch available for sale. I need to check and see if that's still (laughs) open. But yeah. Production-wise, Sunday Service was also a masterpiece. So Big Up Phase 3 production, which pulled off this flawless execution in just two days and main events at the very last minute and main event because I saw people commenting on how good the production was and it started and ended exactly on time not Jamaican time but time time real time yes. the sound quality was impeccable and that particularly impressed me mm-hmm. because when you're talking about making 120 it's singers a lot of people all of them with different and musicians because the the band has to be properly mic'd too. They each had on a wireless headset. They each had their own mic. Every one of those 120. That's a lot of sourcing. And that, that's, that's a lot of... Minute. I don't know if they brought their own microphones, but mm-hmm. what's for sure is the kind of technical engineering it requires to make sure that a band, a, a choir of 120 people sound good mm-hmm. is 
phenomenal that we could pull that off. It's a lot. The live stream quality was very good as well. And everyone seemed to be thinking that Kanye must have brought his own people to pull this off. But no, this was executed by locally by Phase 3 and Main Events. I didn't realize Main Events was a part of it too. I I heard about Phase Mm 3. So hats off to them. But my biggest takeaway was the message and Kanye's ability to reach and touch people's lives, his vulnerability and relatability, which you might find odd from a celebrity, especially an American celebrity, and especially one as big as Kanye West and one as egotistical (laughs) as Kanye West, a man who has a song titled, I am a God, not I am God, you know. I am a god. And another called I Love Kanye, the last line of which is I love you like Kanye loves Kanye, which is all about himself. So so Kanye may be seen as an unlikely prophet, <laughs> a very unlikely prophet. But you know what? God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> very... I'm still not convinced. You're not convinced? Nope. <laughs> no. I, I'm I, not. I was I was touched and it because it's precisely this type of person to whom Jesus appealed. Jesus attracted and converted sinners. I see you cheesing over there hard, Patriarchy. <laughs> but Jesus hung out, not Jesus, which Kanye has called himself as well. <laughs> I hope in this new epistle of his life he's oh, not girl. calling himself Jesus. Oh, but Jesus yeah. hung out with the bottom of the lot, the thieves and the prostitutes, as well as the wealthy. And so it was refreshing to see someone who has it all, who's been through the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows, bear his soul to Jamaica. To me, it came off as authentic. And and so he bore his soul to Jamaica and, and he said, like he says in Jesus Walks, I ain't here to argue about his facial features or here to convert atheists into believers. I'm just trying to say the way school needs teachers, the way Kathy needed Regis, Kathy Lee needed Regis, that's the way I need Jesus. So he shared this personal journey with God, his struggles. And we all know he struggles with mental health issues, manic depression in particular, which is why I don't hold many of the more outrageous things he says against him, such as his comment that slavery was a choice, which if you watch that interview, I watched the entire thing. He was clearly in a manic stage of his illness. And the irony that his concert was at Emancipation Park. Park I know, right? I know, right? But if we're to hold mentally ill people fully accountable for the things they say and do while suffering from that illness, many of them would be in prison instead of accessing medication and treatment. So Kanye, as rich as he is, was to me able to come off as relatable and genuine. And so too to many of the the people who I heard and saw being interviewed and who were commenting on social media, you got the feeling that they were all experiencing this journey with him. And they wanted to be a part of that journey too, a journey to God, to enlightenment, to spirituality. And they wanted to listen to the word that he was spreading, the scripture he was quoting, and the praise he was given, giving. And more than listen, they wanted to participate, regardless of who you were, what part of society you came from. I saw people from uptown and downtown, rich, poor, gay, straight. I saw a known trans woman giving an interview at Emancipation Park Friday night, a person who probably wouldn't be accepted in many Jamaican churches. So Jesus's message of inclusion, of come as you are, was apparent. And by all accounts, people left feeling uplifted and fulfilled, a feeling that I'm not sure today's church is always or even often able to achieve for many, which is why so many people just don't go because they say a church is full of hypocrites and they they fail to acknowledge their own faults and to take accountability. It took two years, for example, for the Moravian church in the Pastor Rupert Clark case to acknowledge and apologize for their wrongs and how they handled that situation. So I'll say to the church on a whole, take a page from the unlikely prophet Kanye West on how to reach people and how to genuinely and authentically impact lives. That's what's on my mind.